Hello, and welcome to the screencast on using R. This will be the first of a series of screencasts introducing R both as, as we foresee, as basically a, a computational calculator, but as we will uh, work with it uh, in the coming days and months, we will see that, in fact, it's a very uh, powerful programming language and environment for doing all sorts of numerical computation, but in particular for doing statistical uh, analysis and data, data analysis. And we'll start with just introducing the basic idea of what R is. Uh, fundamentally, I want to first introduce how I'm going to generally uh, have my console set up and what you're going to see on your screen. There'll generally be two windows, the R console and the R script. So below here will be a script, and we're not going to use that as much in this first screencast. Instead, we will probably focus more on just the console itself. Now this is in fact just a, a slightly advanced version of the standard GUI. Once you've actually installed R, and we'll come to that momentarily, you can actually call R just from any standard terminal once it's installed. So literally we would just call R and you would be in R and you would be able to use R like you would use uh, any program. So in many ways similar to, to Python. But we're, for general purposes, going to instead use uh, a somewhat easier to look at GUI for this. One of the first things, of course, you'll want to do if you haven't yet is install R, and uh, the R project is a very actively uh, evolving uh, development and, and programming environment. Just go to rproject.org and depending on your operating system, you will, can follow the links to download it. Or, uh, easy to install binaries for Windows and Mac and you can also install from source code if you so choose. Uh, for Linux, basically depending on your distribution, uh, there may be uh, source code or binaries uh, that uh, you can just access from your repositories using yum or apt or whatever you, you use. Um, so despite the fact that our simplest is just like Python, just a uh, interactive programming environment, um, there is a GUI, and so depending on the GUI you use, and here for Mac OS X, um, there are menus that you may want to use. We're not going to use the menus very often, but you may find it worthwhile uh, pausing it and taking a look at your, uh, your GUI menus as you get used to it. By and large, we will not use it, however. And of course, one of the useful things to know is how to close R. It's a little bit different than Python, but here you can just go in general, go Q like that, and with the parentheses, you will see that the uh, the parentheses like this. These are, are uh, to basically say that we're calling a function. We're calling calling the quit function. It's our first function call just to close it. And if you do call this, you will get a uh, chancellor. You'll get something like this: save workspace image, yes, no, or cancel. Um, I think for Mac, Mac OS X, I've set mine up slightly differently, but this might give you a slightly different option. Uh, if you'd like to set it up like mine, you can see below in my script at the end. Um, from the moment, we'll just cancel it, so we don't need to do that. And uh, we generally don't need to save it. We will probably never save the workspace image. You only generally need to do that in, in, in fairly uh, substantial cases. So, like I mentioned, R can be used as a calculator. You'll often, by the way, see me clearing my screen on a Mac. You do that by using the Alt, Command, and L all together, and that will clear what's in the console at any given time. Uh, I'm not sure what the Windows equivalent is, but I'm sure there is one. Um, at its simplest, you can think of R as, as a calculator, and you can do simple calculations like 2 plus 2. Uh, you can do, obviously, subtraction. You can do 2 times uh, 2, get 4. You can do exponents. You can go 2 to the exponent 3 is 8. For example, you can also use sort of more standard operators like going 2 with two multiplication signs, and that will also add, uh, act as an exponent. You can do basic log. The basic log will be a natural log, so if we do a log base uh, 10, we'll get 2.3. If we went log instead 10, and we'll see how this works in a second, base equals 10, we get 1, as we might expect. So at its simplest, R is just this kind of calculator. Let's clear the screen. Of course, it's a programming language, which means we need to be able to assign variables and do all sorts of other things, as we will see in this, uh, in this screencast. Um, and the simplest thing to do, of course, is to just create some simple variables. So let's uh, assign uh, the value of 2 to Y. 
So of course, just like another programming language, you type y equals 2. Now I do want to notice that uh, when you when we did assign it, so let's do another one, x8, x equals 3 here, you don't see it output x automatically. The reason it doesn't do that, so it's different than what you see if you go 2 plus 2, where you get an output automatically, when you store it as a variable, it stores it in memory, but it doesn't uh, automatically print it to output. Um, also notice this 1 right here. That means that that's the index. This is going to be incredibly important in using R, and that means we have the first element of the, the output here is a 4. And R, by default, does not have a standard scalar representation. So the number 4 isn't just a single number here, it just it's a vector of length 1. And this will become very important. It makes actually doing computation in R very convenient. It's all vectorized. Okay, not surprisingly, like most programming languages, uh, it's case sensitive. So a capital Y, of course, will give you an error, while a small y will give you output of whatever number we assigned it to. And if we go x plus y at this point, we get 5. We can, of course, assign that to a variable. So z is now uh, going to be stored uh, as, x, as the values x plus y. Um, I also want to point out the very important the very important fact that R has two assignment operators. One is the single equal sign, but uh, despite its convenience in R for, for a number of reasons, partially historical, there's a second operator, assignment operator that's used very often, which is the less than and dash, because Z equals X plus Y, and that will generally be equivalent, and you'll see that works. There'll be some situations, as we will learn later in this class, where you can't use this as an assignment operator, and you will have to use a single equals. Um, it's generally, in R, considered good habit to use, uh, even though it's two keys, to use the less than dash sign. And I have some more comments about this as well, if you'd like to uh, learn about some of the differences with respect to it. And of course, and we'll come back to this uh, in a bit, the dub, uh, if you actually want to say, is something actually equal to a value, you would use, say, x equals two equal signs, just like most programming languages. It's true. x equals two would be a false. You can go x equals y, false. z equals x plus y, true, for example. Okay, we will pause here uh, for a moment and begin the next screencast.